I, I absolutely join that belief. Um, everybody has something to give. Every human being is here on this planet and they fulfill their role. And it may not be a role you want to take on, but that's a, even more of a reason for you to be grateful that they are doing it because you don't have to. It's a journey back within, even though it seems like goals are so externally driven, to some degree they are, but the only reason why you're not there yet is because on the inside you're not yet that human that it takes to achieve that goal, to achieve that end result. Mm. And that's you going back inside. That's you completing all of those, those little things that seem missing, all of these little imperfections that you think are in the way of your perfection. Oh, what a pleasure. Hello and welcome to The Real Success Show. I'm your host, Candice Mama. If you are sitting there and you're thinking to yourself, Candice, I've lost the joy for life. I just need to be happy again. Then today's episode with Oksana Ulanovska is the one for you. But before we jump into it, be sure that you are liking, sharing, and subscribing so more people can find us. Now, without further ado, here's Oksana. Hello. Wow. Hi, great to see you, Candice. So good to see you, Oksana. I've been so looking forward to our conversation together. Same, same me as well. Great to be here. Good. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on The Real Success Show. It is just one of those whenever, you know, you see someone and you see the work they do and you're so inspired by it, it's always great to have that conversation with them. And so for people who have not come across your work, how do you describe yourself? Well, I am a business mindset coach. It means that ambitious, hardworking people come to me to find the way out of their working hard, 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 and instead transitioning to working smart. And how would I love to have my life? And how does my business serve my other values? How does it serve my family? How does it fulfill my mission in life? And we get to spend some time on, on that and dissolving all of that self-doubt and the headaches around goal planning. I don't know if you've had some of those thoughts for yourself in 2022 is right around the corner and we're all ready and excited or we are kind of dreading it and thinking like, I'm not ready. The year is not over yet for me. So that is more or less what I get to do. Yeah. And tell me, you know, what, the past two years, you know, it's been a really different, interesting experience. And I can, like, I can almost feel the anxiety that people have planning for 2022, considering what the past two years have been. Do you find that you're finding a lot of clients that are very resistant due to that? Uh, we're living mm. in a very unpredictable time. Absolutely. So my the students and clients that I'm in touch with, they're very aware, and they're still very fresh in their memory how the past two years have been. And potentially some of the listeners as well, you've thought about like you've made plans, you've tried, you've tried to despite all the restrictions, you've made these plans and you thought like, okay, so what does my heart really want? <sighs> then you felt that fear, maybe I can't have it because of all the restrictions, but you're like, okay, but but I'll try and you've tried and you made some plans and maybe some of them felt flat, especially if it involved maybe some foreign travel that potentially it didn't work out. So what we we get busy with is looking at what you can do because you're absolutely not powerless. And that is the worst place you, you could get into believing, like believing into that illusion that there's nothing that you can do. But it's so easy to see new restrictions come in you know, like right now, what we're experiencing in South Africa, I am originally from Germany, but currently I have the blessing, the privilege to be based in Johannesburg for a while. And just right after I landed on a plane, I, I did a short trip out to Germany and back again. And mine was the last flight that was let in. And I didn't even know. Nobody on the plane knew. And we just arrived. And so the world changed again, just like that. And so many of my colleagues struggled to get back into the country. We don't want to allow that to dictate the outer world, what's happening in the outer world, how our inner world is doing. And by no means we want to allow whatever is happening on the outside, slow down what we're here to achieve. Mm -hmm. So yes, slow down to get present, 
but nay, don't let your goals, <laughs> don't let your goals get uh, bogged down by everything that you can't do. We know these. We know these sayings about when the one door closes. Well, look, where is the one that's opening up? Well, this is what we do. This is what we do. Look at it super clearly. What is the door that's opening up for you? Mm. Where, where are you meant to go? Yeah. Oh, that's such a great way to look at it. And mm. I can almost imagine that you know, whenever you speak about this work and you are so present in it, that people mm. can sometimes project onto you and say. But Oksana, for you, it's easy. It's easy for you to say that because, you know, like it's you, but not for me, you know. Um, mm -hmm. And when people are coming to you with that level of resistance, whether it's unworthiness issues or, you know, they've lost their business or, they, or they've just lost the relationship, where should they begin in their journey? Hmm. You're absolutely right, Candice. Like sometimes I do hear that, uh, that it's, they, they know that's what they're meant to do because they've been working with me for a while. So they know how the game goes. But then they go like, really? Even in these circumstances, the universal laws of how human behavior works still applies? I'm like, yes, my love. Yes, it does. So I did, do not mean to say that it's easy. And I honor everybody's effort who is staying at it and not giving up and I absolutely honor those people who are saying that I need a break I can't do this anymore I've just gotten disappointed one time too much that's okay you take your time because there's wisdom in both making great strides forward and there's wisdom to contemplate and think through your next steps so you were asking where can we start what is a beautiful start where you will know that you're on the right track. So that's the biggest challenge, right? I, most people that I meet, they don't really have a struggle to come up with goals. But some, some do, but most people, they're like, I know what I dream of. I know. Like my heart's been telling me for years. I know. I know what it is. So, and then they put it down. And um, then the next steps would be, well, you know, um, put down the in-between steps that you're going to do. And, you know, they, they start just slowing down there, but they most of the time they're able to do it. Where, where the real struggle comes up is then, well, how do I make that goal fit into my current life? Because maybe I'm not there yet. Maybe I have a plan of shifting a career. Maybe I want to completely transform how I show up with people and my self-worth. Well, but I'm not there yet. So how, how do I make it fit into my daily life? And that's the one aspect and the second aspect is indeed is that really my goal is it me or did i do i think i should want it but i'm not fully certain it could be like that little injection going on that you should want that promotion in that same job that you don't really like you should want to have a better relationship and you should have a gentleman who you know, earns more money or is in some way superior to the one that you dated, even though you're perfectly happy with the one that you have, but you think you should have a different goal. You should want more money. You should earn more money. You know, the, the stories that we tell ourselves are quite endless. So able to distinguish, is it my true goal? And then how do I make those steps from that goal that I've identified as mine? How do I make it fit into my life? So for both of those, if we dive into it a little bit deeper, what, what I use in my practice and I found profoundly helpful is the Dr. Demartini's value determination. That's just the first step way to start, right? Just the first thing on drdemartini.com, you can find the free complimentary values determination. And what it is, it's a journey within and reflecting with yourself. What does my life demonstrate that I do that's really important to me? So it is, there are varied models how we can look at categorizing ourselves, would it like find um, a model or a concept that could explain what matters to us. So the strength of the model that I'm suggesting, Dr. Martini's model, is that we get to, you don't need to guess, you don't need to guess what really matters to you, it's actually your life is demonstrating to that, that to you every day in your actions. And that's the, the power and the beauty of it. So if you've gone through those questions and if you've been 
able to hear your true voice and put down the answers because that can again become a bit of a like hmm I, I have like three answers that I like cruising in my head which one is the right one right I know Candice have, have you done it have you seen Dr. Martini's Dallas Determination mm. did you enjoy it I, I've loved it yeah and I've done it for myself mm. I actually did it uh, two weeks ago funny enough that you're Brilliant. Yeah, yeah. did you find it helpful for your future planning it was. Mm -hmm. It was very helpful for mm -hmm. even where I am presently um, mm -hmm. and what I find to be of value. I think it does become tricky, like you're saying, when you're like, but this mm -hmm. is also important, but this is, but I also like this. But then, and then the list can become just, you know, going. But no, Absolutely. like when you really get slow, I think it's great. Mm, when you can hear that in a voice of yours. And I'm, I'm glad that you were able to distinguish it, that it's, that's so beautiful when, when you look at your at the results, right? And you look at it and like, that's me. And you get a tear of inspiration. It's like, that's me. If I need to tell someone who I am, I can just show this. This is what describes who I am mm -hmm. and what I do every day. Nobody needs to remind me to do that. I'm just pulled towards these things. So the key is to setting up a more stable and also more realistic future starts with knowing what you really are about and what matters to you also present moment because when we do the values determination we also specifically look at this moment there is there is a potentiality that currently because of the circumstances your values have shifted and taking that into account is really wisdom to looking at okay so present day this is what is important to me and i demonstrate that check done so when when you feel that it lands within you okay this is me then ask you ask you in a voice for inner guidance where do you want to take this what is the highest priority most important goal priority action that you would love to do to get to make that step of where you want it to go mm. and from there you, you want to start like really breaking it down and planning it out and i, I mentioned the second aspect that sometimes can can pose a, a challenge is when when your goal is is an amazing vision of the future and when you're not quite certain but well how does it fit into my life now because i'm not there yet i'm not yet making that money or don't i'm not yet in that future business that i want to be well that's where ideally you'll have somebody who has been there already or somebody who can reflect it back to you so it can be any shape it can be a a book of someone's experience you read. It can be an experienced friend, just like be, be careful that sometimes we assume of friends well-meaning advice, you know, just, just some apply some discretion there. It can be a mentor that you have. It can be a professional in the field that you know. It's, in my experience, it tends to shorten the time, what, what, it, what it takes to, to achieve those goals, to achieve those dreams. So that's where I would start. And that is the same process that we use day in and day out. And um, it's a journey back within, even though it seems like goals are so externally driven, to some degree they are. But the only reason why you're not there yet is because on the inside, you're not yet that human that it takes to achieve that goal, to achieve that end result. Mm. And that's you going back inside. That's you completing all of those those little things that seem missing, all of these little imperfections that you think are in the way of your perfection. Oh, what an illusion. What an illusion. <laughs> oh, I absolutely love that. And as people are determining their values and they, you know, define, let's say that a relationship is their highest value. Mm. And mm. a business mindset coach, and they're like, okay, but you know, my whole life I've been so ambitious and I've wanted this, you know, and I've built up like, let's say, a successful, ambitious and work life for myself. Mm. But I really struggle when it comes to this, you know, relationship thing or finding a partner or finding a mate. Then do you work with them in that regard as well? Absolutely. That's actually the most, most prevalent case that I get to work with because my background is relationships. That's where I... Um, love um, being in that's my space that's my favorite space like two people feeling that unique connection and love for each other 
that's what I live for. That's my, that's my jam. So the individuals that I described, you know, the ones with ambition and that have been working hard or they've been really pushing and at some point in time, they kind of find like, okay, so with my approaches, my methods, I, I feel like I'm at the end of my game. Like this is as far as I know how to get with my present level of knowledge, but I know there's more for me. So, and they begin to want that external input or that external practice. Okay, how am I getting at the, the it is often the case that we have um, a certain phase in life arrives when you feel, oh, I've done really well vocationally. I've done really well. And your values start to shift. And all of a sudden you notice that you want to come home earlier. You don't want to spend 12 hours of work, 10, not even eight. You don't want to spend all that much work, um, time at work. And you're noticing like what, what else that you notice the potential, the, the space in your home, just like the house feels too big for your own. Or um, you look at your phone and you think like, I, I would really want somebody to call me, somebody special, somebody who matters. So that is a transition that we make, that shift in values when we're like, I, I don't like my current relationship life or I would like to have one. I don't have one because I work too much, but I would love to have one. And you'll find quite naturally that, yeah, they'll, they'll start to prioritize that area of life. And it will be fascinating to watch that journey of like, oh, how do I um, open myself up in that way, right? How do I reemerge from, from this? And sometimes they've been through a divorce before, right? So sometimes they already have kids, varied, varied age, but they're ready for a new love story, which this time, often will be, and unless they're planning to start a new family or a family, often this will be a love story that will be about them. So where, where you finally, you will have that desire for that partner also to make time for you and you also won't want to work as much. So it's a beautiful space to be in and uh, relationships in the current um, space we're in globally are a bit under strain. People are struggling to date. People feel really lonely. They're like, oh, I can't go outside and meet people. I would love to, but there are all these restrictions. I just came from Germany and they, you know, parts of Germany have shut down Christmas markets. That's like the hotspot for dating. And now you, you don't get to go to Christmas markets. Breaks my heart. <laughs> That's sad. It really is. So yeah, those are some of the some of the challenges that we navigate. Because again, there are so, there are things that you can do. You absolutely not a victim of your environment. Not on my watch. That doesn't happen. So there are doors that are opening, alternative doors. And sometimes people feel like I'm not really comfortable doing things online, or I don't really know how to meet people. Like. Yeah, well, it could grow your business if you met new people. It can, you know, speed things up that way as well. So the more we uh, create those links between career and relationship and how both of them fit together, the more fulfillment you have um, in everything that you do every day. Mm, it was interesting when you were asking about the relationships and uh, if somebody has the highest value in relationship, well, that, that was me. And... In my case, it was different in the sense that I, I perceived I needed this advance in my career to be able to have the present relationship that I have, because it was not just an international one, it was an intercontinental one. So me in Germany and my partner, Robin, well, he's based in South Africa. And I, I'm like, well, how do I make this happen? I'm like, I need to make a lot more money. <laughs> I, I want him I want this vision you know we climbed the, the table mountain together and we just sat there at the very top and it was just that vision that we had together that that's what we we're going to do and I'm going home back to Germany and I'm thinking like how the hell am I going to make that happen now like that same position that we talked about I'm very clear on my values I'm just saying like well I'm not living there yet I want that goal but I'm not there yet how can I make this happen so I got some help. I got some training and two, this is the third year now, three years later, here we are. Um, 
I created the business for my relationship because it was so important to me. So doing business on my terms is, or rather on your terms is something that is a, like a holy tenet in, in when we do the, the work that we do. Business is there, your business is there to fulfill your mission in life to create the life you would want and do it in a way that also considers all the other pieces that your life makes. It is also your health. It is also your social life. It's also your family. It's also your mental health, your spirituality, you're living all of that um, in a way that seems, feels congruent. Um, it doesn't mean that every area, like the, you, you get to give 100% to every area. But that, that's a bit of an illusion. I'm just going to, to mention that. That doesn't quite work. But what does work is when you look at elements that have the most overlap and integrate as much of these as you can in your life. So I work a lot and I have a standing desk. So both health, both my workouts, both my uh, socializing because I also get to look out the window. No, I'm kidding, but it, it covers more than one area. Is is what I'm is what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So that is um, a stronger, stronger way to approach it. And yeah, it it takes some genius. But here's the news: you are a genius, and I want you to apply your wisdom. I want you to do it. Yeah, yeah that's what we're all about. I love that because it's. You know, it, as you mentioned, it's been so interesting during the pandemic versus before in the mm. sense that what the kind of stuff I'd get written about is like, Candice, you know, pre, it would be, I want to make more money. I want to build a business. I want to build mm. a life that's, you know, lucrative, happy, healthy. And it was very, mm. really focused, which I think is mm. a beautiful goal to have, you know, to be a comfortable, mm. life, a comfortable sure. And now it's been so interesting. The past two years, I've seen those letters and messages change so much. And they're like, Candace, <laughs> I love material things. I love all the nice things. But really what I'm struggling with is love. I'm struggling to meet the person. Mm. I'm struggling to stay in a relationship. I'm struggling, you know, I'm always meeting this kind of person or that kind of person. Mm. And so it's been a very interesting, you know, paradigm shift. And in terms of like, you know, how many of those are coming as opposed to the previous. And I think, of course, it is that loneliness. I think it is being subjected to, you know, working from home a lot of the time. We're not getting the same mm. traction, tactile um, feelings that we got prior, right? Absolutely. And so well, for people who are in a situation right now where they're saying, you know what, Oksana, you had Robin, you guys already had each other. So you had a mission mm -hmm. that built that dream, right? But I don't have anyone. I'm not meeting people and the people I am meeting are either unavailable, they're afraid of commitment, they, you know, they're mm. not reliable. Where does someone start shifting the internal in order to start gravitating people who are more in alignment with them? What a beautiful question. Um, I indeed have heard this one quite frequently. That is so true that we feel um, like locked in or almost like trapped in our homes, which previously was like a... Um, a safe place where you would flee from work where you were stressed now it's like I can't get, wait to get out of my home oh my god I was just in a teleconference with a, a colleague and and he's working in the same room with his wife and they're both having phone calls in the same room I'm like oh I sympathize with you so much. That's that's really tough reality. So uh, you end up being in each. So the people who are together, they're in each other's space too much. So they don't get to experience novelty and relationships suffer. People who are alone suffer for different reasons. They're stressed because they're lonely. As, as precisely as you said, they're missing that tactile element where we used to be able to meet friends. Even friends could cover a part of it now. We feel even a bit distant from that. So what we've seen happen is like a general collective raised value for personal growth because we've been almost like confronted with ourselves in this space where we can't go out, we can't do this, can't do that. All of this online world, okay, but all of it has been making us painfully aware of how we feel about ourselves and how we feel inside. Mm. So we've been spending that time um, looking within and some of us have made the conclusion, hey, I don't particularly like what I'm finding. 
I don't really like not all these things that I see are, are cool. So when we talk about a relationship, attracting relationship, a certain one that we want, it will be a representation of how we feel about ourselves, what we feel we deserve will kind of manifest on the outside. So wherever you feel that, hey, you're not attracting the, the wonderful individual that you see yourself spending the time of type of relationship that you want, be it for um, a shorter period of time, midterm, long-term, lifetime, whatever it is for you, you're looking at, well, what is it on the inside that you are not yet fully loving about yourself, that you don't believe is a valuable addition to a relationship, that you um, feel you would actually want to work on before you enter the relationship. Because especially when we feel like that urgency to be with someone, that's certainly kind of, I'm running away of who I am. I don't feel enough. I, I don't feel complete. And I'm going to attract more of what I don't want, more of that incompleteness. So you would start with that inner reflection. I can encourage you to, to make a list. What is it that you think is not enough? What you don't like about yourself? What you think in a relationship is not an asset to have? Is not a great thing? Well, then look at that list and see just how much you don't love yourself. Okay, so just for a second, just for a second. And then make it make a choice. I can invite you, I can only invite you to make that choice. Is it okay for you to continue? Because there's no pressure to change and there are plenty of individuals who will love you at that level. Or you can choose to prioritize that and see how would you love to grow these parts of you love yourself some more complete some of those potentially painful stories from the past or some of those beliefs that you hold that no longer serve you that you're ready to let go of i i would really encourage you to start there december is a magical time every every time something if we let it it can be a time of miracles and basically miracles can happen any day but um when we assign particular meaning to today is that just makes it more real, more easy to associate a miracle with um, with an occurrence. So how about you spend December for those of you listeners who would like to, um, yeah, reflect, take a look at where you headed next year. If you're scared about setting goals, then we definitely need to talk because I love setting goals and I know you'll love it too when you've seen how to do it in a way that is fun, that is amazing, that you get to see, oh, this could also be me. And it energizes you and it fires you up. It doesn't scare you. It doesn't make you feel, oh, right? So when you look through a list, you make a decision that I'd love to be a better me more me, more authentic me, that's, that's where I would definitely take it. And don't stop until you love the whole version. Picture that, like put that picture in your mind as uh, something to measure it by. If you loved yourself fully and completely precisely the way you are now without needing to change, because it's easy to fall, fall in love with the version like oh, me in the future has a ton of cash, has this awesome job, is beauty, has lost 20 Ks, you know, she looks elegant. Well, that, that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like falling in love with the version that you are and valuing you for who you are. And from that space, when you're grateful for what you have, you get more to be grateful for. You can build more from where you're grateful and appreciative of what you have. Mm. Then you have very different um, individuals that you manifest into your life, that you attract and you magnetically, um, they feel drawn to you, which is a, you know, just ups your position on the market. If that's something you're interested in, definitely adva advantageous. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh, man, that's incredible. And for people who have the belief system that, you know, the relationships we draw in, are because I'm a believer in this, actually, that the people mm. we draw into our lives can be our greatest teachers if we allow them to be. And so for those people who believe that, they're like, 
but what if this, I'm not done with all my lessons, should I still be taking these lessons? <laughs> you know? Like, does that have a space mm. in the life we're creating? Like, you know, engaging with people as though every person is there to teach you something. I find it a beautiful way to engage with people because um, I, I absolutely joined that belief. Um, everybody has something to give. Every human being is here on this planet and they fulfill their role. And it may not be a role you wanna take on, but that's a, even more of a reason for you to be grateful that they are doing it because you don't have to. Then they get to do what they love or what they've been hired to do or what they're there to do. Let them do their thing and appreciate them that there's somebody taking care of that. Often we really forget it's how, you know, the society is set up and that we need so many people just manage one country. You know, I, I, I'm originally from Latvia, which is a tiny uh, northern European country, and we just have two million inhabitants. OK, still two million is a lot of people. And you need like for the society to function. You need like their, their job descriptions that I would I would die before I'd be able to do that. But they, they're like these superhuman. They can do it. I'm so grateful. Like they do taxes. They look after that there is like water in my pipes things like that. So I'm, I'm purposefully stretching the conversation a little bit bigger that we look at it and appreciate that there is a variety of humans like who do farming and make electrician and make sure our waste gets disposed of. So grateful that they exist. And then you don't have to do their job, right? And when you get to interact with people that you think like, oh, like tax collectors or debt collectors or whoever, they're definitely there with a lesson. And if we can appreciate them for the fact, well, they're doing something I don't want to do. And what is it that it brings up in me that is such a challenge that I haven't loved about myself? That's, that's the one aspect for sure. Invite that. Mm. I think what I heard in your question was basically, should I continue collecting my lessons out in real life? Or should I stop the bloody lessons out there and just read my books first and do my coaching first and do my therapy first and, you know, stop getting smacked in the face all the time because I'm, I'm getting rather harsh lessons. Right. So <laughs> the fascinating beauty is that in relationships, and especially in the romantic ones and the intimate ones, it is almost like, let me take you two steps back. When, when we think about parents, and if you had the privilege to grow up, for example, in a divorced home, or there was somebody, a part of your parents that you didn't uh, get to see as much. So if you observe that, you, you may have noticed that the individual who you spent time with, in my case, it was my mom. I lived with my mom. And when you see them close up every day, there is no place to hide. Like you see them in their most basic imperfections. You see them every day. You see everything. And that's why you develop so much, you know, emotional love for your parents, right? Because you've seen them, you've, you've had to experience all that. But when you have a little bit of distance to them, like in case with my dad, I didn't get to see him all that much. I mean, I missed him. And there are some things that irritate me about him. But most of the time, I didn't get to see him. So you tend to like, also idolize them a little bit because they're they at a distance. They kind of these, you, you get to put them almost on a pedestal because you didn't get to see them up front. So with work colleagues, it's also an interesting thing because we usually spend quite a lot of time with them as well. But it's a professional environment, so we still don't see them privately. Now, the fun starts with our romantic relationships. You see them up close every day if you live together, or at least a lot of time. So you won't be able to escape those lessons. Like th that's, that's your main training ground as far as I'm concerned. Our romantic partners have the most to teach to us and you can ask those few couples that have been happily married for 20 30 years and have spent so much time up close in each other's face and have managed to still love each other um, they won't lie to you that it's easy at least i hope not they, that, that would be a lie it's not easy to love somebody this close up and see them every day and see it in such detail everything that might irritate you um, you can't avoid it though so it's, it's wisdom in my mind to learn about relationships, learn about your reactions, find a space to reflect on your reactions and train your brain to make different choices.
So it is indeed a training. It's helpful to do it with a professional who can guide you how to navigate dif difficult, um, let's say preconditions, because we come into a relationship with perfectly opposite triggers and those things will set you off no matter how much, well, how many books you've read. It will be both you having studied and read, but also training your brain, training your mind in action, and then, well, learning to make different choices. So stopping your lessons, I don't know if I would, but I would definitely equip myself of like, am I handling those lessons better? Am I actually learning? Am I making progress? Or am I just, you know, otherwise, that's just my life. Those are not lessons anymore. That's just your life. If you're not, if you don't feel like you're making something new of them, then that just becomes like a regular habit. That's probably um, repeated lesson that you'll get to grow through more and more. Does, does that make sense, Candice, what yeah. I should? No, I absolutely mm. love that. And I agree with you. I have the same belief system around relationships that our romantic partners will always be our the people who help us evolve the greatest like, mm. in our life experience uh, because they are such close replicas of the parents we had growing up, right? And mm. it's either you're trying to undo the relationship that you had with your parents or redo it, or it's just like this, mm -hmm. always this constant and obviously the partner you with, no matter who they are, they come with their own baggage. They come with their own issues. Mm -hmm. And so you're doing this dance that you're just hoping. <laughs> like, we like, don't step on my toes. Stop stepping on my toes. You know? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. It's fantastic. But coming back to you as a, an individual, what brought you into this line of work? Hmm. Many things. Primarily... I mentioned that my, my parents were divorced and I didn't get to see my dad all that much. And if you've ever worked with, with people where you've untangled this, um, how they identify themselves, a little bit of those limited beliefs, limited stories they tell themselves, um, mine was that, oh, life was better with men. Because I grew up with my mom and my grandma and my aunt and all of them were divorced. And I had the story that we're struggling because we're just women and we can't work it out. So, yeah, I was I was really um, that was my level of education. So be gentle with me. And I thought that if, if only I worked out how to have a great relationship, I would be happier. I would, we would also be wealthier because there'd be two incomes in a household instead of one. So that was definitely what drove me to study everything that there is about relationships and also about myself, because I noticed when, when I was growing up, I had a very particular set of interests and I can't say that my environment understood me. I, I don't really think they shared any of my interests and my beliefs. So I, I really loved learning. I loved reading books and spending time with teachers instead of my peers. Because my teachers had things to teach me. They, they, they were grown-ups. They had like power. My peers were just like kids. So I was a little bit bored by them. Trying to, to find those answers about me. And the third element was really, well, I experienced my, my growing up quite poor to so quite limited opportunities. And I was trying to work it out like, man, how, how do wealthy people, how do they make it happen? So I don't have that background, but I want to be one of them. How? How do I do that? Which um, I never wanted to do work that was just for money. That's, that never attracted me. I wanted to do something I'm inspired by. So those three aspects, you know, the relationships, the self-understanding, and having a career that fulfills me and creates, gives me a life of opportunities where three reasons that were, was, they were quite painful initially. So I'm so grateful that it really pushed me to find serious answers. And that led me to move from Latvia, move to Germany um, without just like with one suitcase and 300 euros, like, hey, here I come Germany, I'm going to do this. Like, I don't think I'd ever do that again, but you know how you're grateful that you were like 20 and you don't understand what you just did that was me that was me lucky me I didn't understand what I did that's that's how I basically came into it thinking 
I have all of these shortcomings, but I really want to have a great life. I felt I owed it to my, to my family because of seeing the three generations of like not really making progress, just like working for survival. I'm like, no, I got to figure something out. I got to figure out something different. And again, them also all being divorced. And I, I kind of took on their limited beliefs about themselves, not feeling really attractive, not feeling really wanted by men and all of these things. So I'm like, nah, I'm, I'm doing this for me, for my name, for my generation, but we're doing things differently. So I was blessed with mentors, Candice. I was really blessed with people in my life that I meant that met that I got to study with and coach with. And coaching is a magical profession where you get to hold yourself to a much higher standard, which can be an upside, can be quite a lot of pressure. And I will, my favorite thing to do is like, <laughs> I'll show you, I have books on my desk that I'm reading for my next sessions. So when I'm next seeing my students, I, I have, a, a huge huge background of things that I study and I love that and I love to make other people's lives more impactful deeper more serve more have more fulfillment and knowledge helps with that guidance helps with that helps with have more impact feel closer to your heart when you do your work and yes yes you make a bigger difference you earn more you do earn more. That's why I focus on that business side because what we sometimes forget as entrepreneurs are really the heart of our economy because they're the ones who take the risk and they take, you know, they create jobs, they create services that really help people just feel better about themselves, have more meaning in life. That's why I chose from all of the coaching arenas that I could do, I work with those ambitious, hardworking um career-driven individuals who value their knowledge and they know that if they get the right um, application of what they already have inside that they know they'll change their life and I get to witness that every day. Oh, that is beautiful. I mean there's so much I want to unpack there but we just don't have the time but what is now that you know looking back as that 20 year old who packed a suitcase to get <laughs> um, being all the way in south africa now and living a life that you're proud of in all mm. this what is like a highlight of your life so far like in your career life probably the jump to that took when i decided i'm going to do the the coaching uh, then I, I've been a coach for a long time but there was a part when I decided that okay this would be the main thing that I'll put my everything in and um, it was a pretty scary thing to do and you'll see that many coaches are you know currently on the planet there are many coaches you know I've read numbers of up to 5.8 million coaches on this planet I don't know if you're aware of that there are a hell of many so to, to handle that mind chatter, like, who do you think you are? And how do you think you can do it? And the one thing that helps you switch off that chatter and understand what it's really about, and that's what makes coaches successful. So this is what I would love to share with anybody who will listen. The moment you're able to make your, your dedication, your career, not about you, who you are, what you have, what you don't have, what you're not enough in. That is you running the story about you. That's not you serving. That's not you helping. When you can shift that focus away from this irrelevant you and to all of these people that you see in your, in your mind's eye, that you have in your heart that you want to help, and you dedicate all of your focus. So how do I help them solve a problem that I love serving? And when you get that switch, and it doesn't come easy, granted. That's why I'm. Um, into what you'd love to do, what your heart would love to do. Ooh, I think I dropped out there. There you are. You're back. You're back. Yes. I'm back. Okay. So the moment you get to complete, the moment that you get to make that switch between 
me, me, me. Oh my God, how will I? And you get to shift over to who are those incredible individuals that I want to help transform their life. That is, that is where magic happens. And that's where that magic happened for me. And it was scary and it was beautiful. It was so beautiful. And I made sure that, I mean, I wasn't stupid about it. Like I had a plan and I had, uh, you know, precautions and I had a support network when I did my jump. But that was the biggest thing that changed my life that I decided I'm out of here. Germany, I love you. I Corporate world, I love you too. I'll be back. Like, no, but um, yeah, and I jumped. It was time to jump from Germany as well. And who knows where we're going next, but um, I'm keeping all of these and all of my students come with me wherever I travel because we, we travel full time now with Robin. And yeah, everybody just needs to hear it that you can have exactly the life that you want when you can almost marry it what you want with what others want and find a beautiful way how to how to deliver that you're in business literally that is absolutely beautiful <laughs> and what is real success to you hmm. fantastic question to me success is how i feel about myself and when when a topic that I teach on a lot is also self-confidence, right? So we kind of, how do we go from self-doubt to self-confidence? And one piece, how I measure self-confidence is you're looking at what you said you'll do and you're taking action. So you're following through that your words match your actions. And that's how you earn self-confidence. I cannot give you self-confidence when we work together but I can hold that mirror up for you that we make sure that you've created the most authentic, most sensible steps. And then it's up to you to take that action and you earn your self-confidence. It's not something that you, you buy, you earn it. So success is something after I've gone ahead and ahead and I've set myself an ambitious goal and I've taken action and I've set myself a new goal and I've taken action. And after you've done it enough times, that you feel like I can do this. What I've said, I will do. And I know I can. I see it in my mind's eye. Done. I'm already there. That's, that's what success is for me. How you feel about yourself, that you know your word means everything. That is power. That is so much power. Mm -hmm. And our final question as we wrap up is, what is something about you that we will not find on Google? <laughs> There's so much about me on Google. <laughs> hmm. I used to breed dogs. Google was full of that. That is my, my other love because I love connection and animals connect with us in an amazing way. Did track and field. I was very big in sports. Don't, I'm not sure if that's on Google. And... I install like I install software. I'm a human behavior scientist who who does IT. That's my other life. I um, do uh, software customizing and do trainings on SAP in banking area as well, which is I know it totally doesn't fit my profile, but there is a fantastic story behind it. When I was just done with my master's degree in social sciences, you know, I studied political science, international relations, economy, all of these things. How do you create powerful nations? How do nations become powerful? Um, I had amazing stellar grades and I couldn't find a job. It was heartbreaking. I loved what I did, but there was so much competition. Like everybody studies social sciences when they don't know what they're going to do. And you finish with a degree that doesn't tell you who you are. Like in your diploma, it doesn't give you an identity. Who are you? I don't know who you are, sociologist. Who is that? Um, I, think, I think I'll think about it and they end up not hiring you. So it was really hard. But, you know, I, I kind of made it through and I did my nonprofit journey and it was all beautiful. And then 
as you'd suspect, I fell in love. And then I, I followed my love to different, again, new state in Germany, because that's what I do, relationships are me. I'm, I'm not attached to location. I go where my heart calls me. And so I arrive in Frankfurt, Frankfurt in Germany. I don't know if you've heard of Frankfurt. Frankfurt is the banking capital. Banks and insurances all are hubbed in Frankfurt. So much money there. So when you arrive in Frankfurt, you look for a job, you're going to work in banking. You get to work in banking. And here's the magic, Candice. Here's the magic. I arrive in Frankfurt and I, I start applying. And, you know, my profile does not say anything IT, nor banking, nor nothing economical. I'm a social scientist. But I go to that interview and I tell them, you tell me what you need me to do. And I'll do it in a week. And I'll do it by Monday. And you test me on it. I will work. I told them that I will work. And I got hired. And I got... <laughs> I got paid really, really well to learn how to do it. And I worked for them. I so did. I, I loved being embraced with the way that they did. And like social scientists pay you really crappy. and You can't even find a job there. I'm like, guys, IT is open. They're looking for people. Software is awesome. So that's my message to the world. In a different life, I was also an IT um, banking software installer. And um they welcome you with open arms. If you're willing to learn, if you're willing to work, they're waiting for you. And they're really, really paying well. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> that story was actually the perfect way to end an interview. Like that is absolutely brilliant. Because <laughs> that's precisely what I did. I remember oh his face. I'm there in this moment. And uh, yeah, I got the job. There was not because I had the credentials. Because I was willing, I want. I was just waiting for an opportunity. Just give me a chance. I'll work. Oh, that is beautiful. <laughs> That's the way I want to leave it. Oksana, thank you so much for your time, for your graciousness. This mm -hmm. has been such a beautiful conversation. Mm, thank you, Candice. It was a pleasure. I look forward to seeing you next time. Yeah, me too. I absolutely love that conversation. And if you loved it as much as I did, then be sure that you are commenting with the things that stood out the most for you. If you have not listened to the rest of our episodes, be sure that you are checking out our playlist and catching up on any episodes you may have missed. It has been an honor to serve you and I look forward to doing it again next week.